Whatever comes, and I won't complain. I've run my hope. You see your name. You know your joy. Your way to my praise. So I give thanks for all you have done. You can't tell. So here I stand, you are my God, your faithfulness and my sorrow. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let's look to him in prayer. God, we are so grateful that you have given us the strength. Lord, you've given us the desire. Lord, you've given us the will to want to be together tonight. Lord, to lift up holy hands of praise, to give you thanks, God, for your goodness towards us. Father, as we have joined together, you see our hearts, Lord, how they are knit together for this purpose, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, as we pray tonight, I ask that bondages would be broken. Lord, those that are hurting tonight would sense the presence of God bringing healing and wholeness to their lives, to their lives. Lord, that are bound up and wounded, Lord, by the attack of the enemy. Father, for those who are struggling with doubt and disbelief over the things that may have gone wrong in their life, Father, I pray that the precious power of the Spirit of God will be the healing balm of Gilead tonight. Lord, be that, that salve for their souls that they stand in need of. Father, as we seek to worship you tonight, we pray that you'd be glorified, Lord, as we continue to sing songs, Lord, as we give words, Lord, that would encourage others, we pray, oh God of heaven and earth, would you be lifted 
lifted up tonight and receive our worship. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, thank you. You may be seated. Glory to God. It is so great to be in the house of the Lord with you on this Tuesday night of Thanksgiving week. So grateful. How many of you have got the turkey already sitting down? How many of you feel like you are the turkey? You're already sitting down? <laughs> Praise God. But I know that uh, you're getting ready to gather with your families and have some precious family time over this week and the next few days. So I do believe that God's going to help you to be able to enjoy that. But before you get to those special gatherings around the table and there in your households, I believe that tonight's worship service is going to be a blessing to you. It's going to encourage you in your walk with Christ. Tonight, let me just say welcome again to you. And if you're one of our online viewers tonight, we say welcome home. We're so glad that you're part of tonight's worship service as we want to encourage you to not let Thanksgiving just be a one-day thing, but let Thanksgiving be the attitude and the lifestyle that you lead from this year forward. Don't just have Thanksgiving week, but have a lifestyle that's called Thanks Living. That's not a slip of the tongue. That's intentional, right? It's thanks living, not thanksgiving, because we want to live a thankful life. Well, tonight, I want to encourage you to pay attention to the video that I want to share with you, and it's called Taken for Granted. It reminds us that quite often we're guilty of taking the very blessings of life that are material, that are practical, some things more important than that, but we take so many things for granted. Let's enjoy this video together. Seriously? Okay. Oh. Where is it all going? Oh. Please, please, please. <laughs> Why is this happening? No! It's 12.78. All right, let me get you uh... <laughs> oh, my. No, buddy. No, no, buddy. No, no, buddy. Are you taking things for granted again? Yeah, I guess so. All right, well, is there anything you can do about that? Because we really need to do some laundry. Lord, will you please give me a more grateful heart? Buddy! My car! Okay. Makes you thankful for what you have. But you know, when you get my age, is, uh, you think that's kind of normal because you're just misplacing things all over the place. <laughs> is, uh, we want to thank you tonight for the generous offering for Sunday's annual Thanksgiving offering. We'll keep this offering open until the end of the year with occasional reminders to you. But uh, gifts toward this special offering should be marked Thanksgiving and placed in a regular offering or even given through tithely. And we do appreciate it. Is uh, you know that's what furthers God's business, isn't it? Our scripture for tonight is Second uh, Corinthians nine and eleven. You will be made rich in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Let us pray, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time of year, Lord, that we can we set aside, Lord, a time for thanksgiving lord but lord is is this as is, is we put it as uh, a handle on this offering we is, we receive a special offering it's thanks living lord we have a thanks living day every day of our lives lord we we have 
when we become your children, Lord, we're so blessed, Lord. We have better lives. We have healthier lives. We live so much better, Lord. And we have the promise of everlasting life with you and our Lord Jesus Christ. But, Father, we just ask now, Lord, that you will receive this offering, Lord. And it will be shaken down and running over for your glory and for your praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And once I pass, you can stand up and continue to join us in worship.
Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known. In the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so So good With every breath That I am able I will sing of the goodness as a mouthpiece God that your word may go forth with power and accomplish its purpose you know what we need Lord collectively and individually Lord we ask you right now to speak through your servant Lord 
allow me to decrease that you may increase and your word would accomplish its purpose in this place and let everybody say amen and amen you may have your seats in the presence of the lord let's give the lord a hand clap of praise as our praise team leave the stage amen i greet you all in the strong name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen i'm so glad that y'all are here and it's thanks living service, amen. And uh, Pastor uh, explain what he mean by thanks living. But a lot of times people don't know how to put this thanks living thing into action, amen, in our everyday lives. So uh, as we greet with our family this Thanksgiving, uh, just don't tell them you love them. Show them you love them. Let them know you appreciate them. Let them know how, how, what you think about them and what they mean to you throughout uh, your life. Amen. And just uh, putting this Thanksgiving thing in action. If you're thankful for your job, amen, do your job unto the Lord, not if your boss is looking or not. Amen. If you're, if you, if you're, uh, if you're grateful for your salvation, if you're thankful for your salvation, share the good news of the gospel with someone else. And that's how you use, uh, live this thanksgiving thing out throughout the year. Amen. But I want to, uh, the Bible says in all things give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, this, this past Sunday, uh, several of you asked me, was our grandpa yet? Amen. And I am, to, I am thankful that I am a grandfather. My grandson is 10 days old as of today. Amen. That's his, he was six pounds, and uh, his name is Jaden Wesley Miller. My, my middle name is Wesley, so I, I believe I've kind of named, he named after me. Amen. I'm just going to call him J.W. I'm going to leave the Miller out. Amen. But I, I, I was starting to do a little Christmas shopping. So I, I got him a grand boy, grand boy starter kit. And uh, if I, yeah, that's his grand boy starter kit right there. And uh, it even got a gas can on it. My, my, my partner was laughing at me like, he can't even walk yet. I said, that's going to be his walker also. Amen. So uh, I prayerfully, uh, on tomorrow I get to hold him for the first time. I told his dad, I said, well, when I get there, I'm going to start uh, holding him up while I can support his weight because he's going to need them strong legs to push that lawnmower. <laughs> Amen. And <laughs> my baby daughter's, my baby daughter's at the back there. She know how I feel about cutting grass. I think she started cutting at six or seven years old. And she, she was so small that when she pushed the lawnmower, just lifted up in the back. <laughs> but I just, I just thank God uh, for him. And I remember just... The Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm grandpa, and I got a great-grandma. They're going to need some grass cut. And I, I, I'm not going to allow him to watch me go out there to cut grass while he play video games. Amen. Uh, but I know I remember I liked the video that was shown earlier about how we can take things for granted. And I remember some years ago, from years ago when I was in, it was about this time of year, uh, I was in California, and, and on Wednesday night, we had a ministry that we went downtown, and we fed the homeless. We fed the less fortune downtown, and it was about this time of the year, and it was getting cold, and a lot of times, we go downtown, and we take jackets for those that's down that don't have jackets, and, and this particular Wednesday, my daughters wasn't in school, and my oldest daughter, I went and talked with her and talked to her friends. I said, I want to take you all downtown to feed the homeless with me tonight. And I say, go through your closets and, and see if you have any jackets uh, or sweaters you're not wearing. And I say, bring those down, and we just hang them on the fence, and whoever needs those jackets can take them. And so I, I told my daughters that. She had two of her friends, and they was laughing, going through the closet, saying, oh, nobody's going to wear this. This is so ugly. This is, I had never wore this. And they was making light of the situation. And so in their mind, they're thinking homeless people. They're thinking bums and uh, people that's drunks and things of that nature. But when we got downtown, it was a, it's an open parking lot with a fence around it, and we would set up and feed the homeless. And I told my daughters, I say, grab the jackets and the sweaters and hang them on the fence. So if anybody want them, they just take them. They don't have to talk with anybody. And I continued to set up like I normally do. And about 15 minutes later, I went to go check on my daughters, uh, my daughters and her friends, and I couldn't find them. And I looked in the car, and there they were in the car. 
And uh, I, look, uh, I looked in the back seat of the car. All three of them was crying. And I asked them, hey, baby, what's wrong? She said, Dad, do you see the girl that's getting the jacket off the, the fence? Say, she's go to my school, and she's on my basketball team. You see the little boy that's over there getting the jacket off the fence? He's on the football team at our school. And I says, he says, two more people that's in line getting food, they go to our school. And it, je- it dawned on them how blessed they were. And it was kids their age that was going to bed hungry, that didn't have jackets, that was grateful for the things that they could get off the fence. And I remember we got finished feeding that night, and I got in the car, and the, the girls was quiet. And I looked back, and not only all the jackets and the sweaters they put on the fence was gone, but the jackets and sweaters they wore down there, they had given it away. All the money in their pockets they had given it away. And when, on the way back home, it was a quiet, it was a quiet uh, car ride. And it really uh, hit home how blessed and uh, how grateful, ungrateful they were for all the things that God had given them. Amen. So I just want to, it is important, it is important to be grateful. And just like that video, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be, our scripture text tonight is uh, Luke 17th chapter at 11th uh, through the 19th verse. It's a story that's recorded in only the, the gospel of Luke. And Luke is, was a ph- physician, a doctor. That might be one of the reasons why it was only recorded in Luke. But I'm going to be reading from uh, the King James Version, and I'll be reading this in its entirety. And the Word of God reads, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him three men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus... Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when they saw that he had been healed, he turned back, and with a loud voice he glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering, where th- weren't there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give God glory, give glory to God. NIV said, has no one returned to give God glory, save this stranger? And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. I want to speak a few minutes tonight from the topic, are you the one or are you the nine? Are you the one or are you the nine? Amen. I'm going to be speaking uh, 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 narratively tonight, uh, narratively tonight. I'm I'm not going to be uh, bringing out two uh, points, specific points, but I'm going to just read the story and, and, and bring out what God has showed me about this story. And, and I just pray the Holy Spirit do what only he can do and, uh, and, 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 uh, and that, that you can jot down some things that affect you uh, in your life that's, that's speaking to you by the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. This story is Jesus. This story is about Jesus traveling. He was traveling to Jerusalem, but he was passing through the edge of Samaria and, and Galilee. And he met these men, these 10 men with the worst disease of the day. It was very contagious. It was leprosy. Amen. And leprosy, if you don't know, leprosy attacks the body and uh, leaves sores. Uh, I was over in Africa some years ago, and uh, we had been out to sea for about 90 days. And everybody was ready to, uh, to go out to restaurants and have some fun. And we got on a bus, and it went through a pack of people that was leprous, and we stopped at a we stopped at a red, uh, a red light, and you could just see all the people with their hands up to the windows, and most of the hands didn't have fingers, and and all of a sudden the bus got quiet, and uh, and we saw how blessed we was as as people, 
and uh, to pass through that and see people in that condition uh, suffering from leprosy, uh, missing fingers and toes and limbs and things of that nature. I mean, and these are the type of uh, situation these men was in. Leprosy, not only you, you can use, uh, lose your limbs and, and uh, over a 30 year span, you can use body parts could fall off. You can lose sensation in your hand and, and things of that nature. And, and can you imagine three, I mean, 2,000 years ago when they didn't have the medical attention they have today for those that were suffering from leprosy? Amen. And not only the physical pain of leprosy, the emotional no pain. If you had leprosy, uh, they took you away from your family. It took you away from your children. You weren't able to hold your children and kiss your wife. And your, your grandchildren would never be able to hold them again. You was moved out your home and out on the outskirts of the town, out, outside the camp. And you was there. Uh, and, the, and the leopards, the leopards usually st uh, stayed in the camp together. And they, they band together and they go around begging for food and, and uh, asking for assistance. And one of the jobs of the local priests was not only to preach on the Sabbath day, they was like a, a health official uh, that will pronounce a person that had leprosy, that they had leprosy, and they would pronounce if a person had an opportunity to be cleansed, cleansed, they would pronounce that the leopard was cleansed. I, I think I have a, a, a couple pictures of some, some, some people that's uh, dealing with leprosy in advanced stages. And uh, if you never see it, these are some, uh, some advanced stages of people that's dealing with, with leprosy. It's hard to watch. I, I, I was, I was uh, listening to, it was a woman that had written a book that her, her uh, dream was to go and work in a leper leprosy camp, a leopard camp. And she finally got the opportunity to get over there and work in this camp. And she said she kept, she got ready to go in, but she, she just kept passing by the entrance. She said, not because of the screams and the moans you could hear. He said, because of the smell of the rotten flesh and the, and the flesh that's rotting off a of, of people's body. And she never got an opportunity to go in and do what she wanted to do. That she just couldn't stomach it. So we have these 10 men that's dealing with leprosy. And uh, verse 11, verse 11 said, it came to pass that as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through uh, the midst of Samaria. Uh, in Galilee. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he was on his way to the cross. And he passed through these areas, uh, the Samaritans, where there was a lot of outcast people. God, Jesus, a lot of times, went out of his way to speak and to minister to those that was outcast. And a lot of times, a lot of times when Jesus passed by, or Jesus speak to you in a service, a lot of times people say, well, next time, Next time I accept the Lord, not this time. Next time I have another opportunity next time to accept the Lord. But Jesus here, he was on his way to the cross. It wasn't going to be no next time. And a lot of times you don't know if it's going to be a next time. You just take it for granted it will be a next time. But I want you to take the opportunity any time you present the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't, don't, don't bet on a next time. Because it might not be a next time. Amen. And uh, verse 12 say, as he entered a certain village, he met the ten men that was leprous, which stood afar off. These ten men, all of them had the same problem. They weren't of the same ethnicity. They wouldn't have never hung out together. But because of their problem, because of their issue, they hung out. They was hanging out together. They was in a group and a band banded together. And a lot of times, especially teenagers and young people, a lot of times people that's dealing with the same issues, the same problems, the same uh, uh, addictions gather, uh, drawn to each other. They're drawn to each other in groups, especially if you have issues. And, and, uh, and a lot of times, if you're, you're always attracting crazy people, you probably need to check yourself. You might be crazy yourself. Amen. So you attract like people most of the time. Amen. And, and the Bible said that the leopard stood afar off. And, I, and I'm wondering, you know, a lot of times you can come to the house of God. You can come to, in the, uh, to church. 
but because of your condition, because of what you're going through, you can stand or fall off. You can, you can come to harvest and never get connected, never uh, get checked into a ministry because of your condition, because of what you're going through, because you're feeling that you're far off or not where you're supposed to be. And I, I, well, what I want you to let you know that Jesus knows when you fall off. He's, Jesus is there for the outsider. Jesus wants you to come in and be a part of his family. Amen. And whatever condition you have, he could fix that condition. Amen. And verse 13 says that he lifted, they lifted up their voices. They lifted up their voices in unity. They had a choir, a leprosy choir. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They lifted up their voices. It's like all of them opened their voices and they began to cry out to Jesus. I mean, one of my favorite verses is uh, Psalms 34. It said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Amen. God, to get God's attention, you might have to cry out. To get God's attention, you guys have to open your mouth and let God know that uh, you need him. I mean, a lot of times, you, a lot of times we're, we're, we're too cute uh, uh, we're worried about what people say, and we don't want to cry out. Amen. But, but if you get in a position bad enough, if you get in a situation hard enough, you will cry out to the Lord. You will cry out and let him know that you need him. And the only way you're going to get out of that situation is if he brings you out. Amen. These men cry out. And they just didn't cry out anything. They cried out, Jesus. They cried out to somebody that was able to help them. They didn't cry out Buddha. They didn't cry out Muhammad. They didn't cry out Pastor Williams. They didn't cry out Pastor John. They cried out the one that was able to help them. And there's a lot of times we just cry out to men, and men can't do nothing for you. Amen. But, but God, you need to cry out to the, the King of kings and the Lord of the Lord, the one that is able to help you and get you out and bring you through that storm. And the, And one of the things I, I like, they just didn't cry out, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, our Savior. A lot of people cry out, Jesus, our Savior. They might say, uh, they cry out the Jesus that, that, that loves, that's full of love. Jesus that will save me from hell's fire. But these men, in their jacked up situation, they were smart enough to say, Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. It's the difference of saying Jesus, Savior, and Jesus, Master. You can look at Jesus as a Savior, but then you can look at Jesus as a Master. When you look at Jesus as a Master, that means whatever you tell me to do, I'm willing to do. Amen. That, that you have laid everything aside to follow Jesus, the Master. And these men were saying, Jesus, Master. Master, whatever you tell us to do, we're ready to do it. We're ready to do it. We have, we, we have no reserve. We're ready to do whatever you call us to do. Amen. So we need to be willing to call not only Jesus Savior, but we need to call them master. We need to call them master. And a lot of times we're missing out on the blessings of God because we, we, we refuse to let God be in control of our lives. We have areas in our lives that we don't want God control of. We have people in our life that you, won't, you don't want to, to, to take out of your life. You got habits that you don't want God to know about or, or control of. You have situations you're holding back. You have closets that things are locked up in the closet that, that you're not allowed Jesus to be master of and take out of your lives. Amen. And uh, if we just allow the master to come in, we'll be a whole lot better off. Amen. We'll be like these lepers on our way to get our healing. And not, not only he said, Master, he said, they said, have mercy. How many know we need mercy? Amen. Mercy means that you're not getting what you deserve. God is not getting you what you deserve. And a lot of people don't know it's mercy. It's mercy. It's by his mercy, we woke up this morning. Amen. Mercy, when you came to, came to church tonight, mercy, what kept your, your car on this side of the highway and the other car coming to you on that side of the highway. Uh, mercy is the one is the, is the reason why you young people you're probably not expelled from school and you're probably not expended uh, had to fell out of school. Uh, mercy is 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 why some of us ain't locked up. Mercy of God is why some of us had, don't have uh, uh, HIV and uh, and and I have a DUI and lung cancer, cirrhosis, other little is because His mercy. 
I mean, it's because of his mercy. In his mercy, he, he's been better than us. We've been with ourselves. Amen. If it wasn't for his mercy, we would have been judgment. It would have been some of us to be dead. But because of his mercy, the Bible said every morning we have new mercies. Every morning, and we don't have no old, wore out mercies. Every morning we receive new mercies to get us through the day. Yeah, that's, that's enough to give God praise about right there. You, shouldn't, uh, you can get up praising God knowing that you got new mercies to see you through the day, to strengthen you through the day, to direct you through the day. New mercies, amen. Waking up every morning with new mercies. Waking up giving God praise that you have clothes on your back and a roof overhead, food to eat and, and health and strength. And a lot of things we take for granted. Amen. We should get up every morning and give him praise and thanksgiving for what he already done. Uh, verse 14 said, when, they, when he saw them, he said, show yourselves to the priest. When he saw them, when he saw the, the lepers, when he saw the outcasts, when we, when we saw the people in, in a bad situation, a rejected situation, seeing someone that, that the doctors can't help them. Nobody can help them. They, and they cried out to Jesus, and Jesus saw them. Jesus saw them. And I, I just want to let you know, if you're, if you're in a bad situation, if you're, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling depressed, all you got to do to, is cry out to Jesus. Jesus will see you. He will, he will, he will, he will see you. Amen. I don't care how low, uh, low you have fallen, how bad your bad habits and got, how, how bad the doctor diagnosis uh, you done got, how hopeless you is, Jesus can see you. All you got to do is cry out, and he will deliver you. And, and Jesus just gave them simple instructions. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass, they went. Now, the problem is, Jesus didn't pronounce them healed yet. He, he gave them instructions to go see the priest. But the problem is, you can't go see the priest unless you're healed. So I can, I can imagine these ten lepers. They done called Jesus master. Whatever you say, I'm going to do. And he told them, go see the priest. Now, they got the, they on their way to the priest, but they're still lepers. But on their way to the priest, on their way walking to the priest, that's when their miracle happened. They were stepped out by faith, walking into the priest, and that's when their miracle happened. I can imagine, I can imagine the, uh, one of them got a tingling in his hand. I mean, his fingers start straightening out. The pigment in his skin start coming back. But it... But they had to take a step of faith before they got their miracle. And a lot of times, if every, people want to, wanna, wanna, uh, they, they want the miracle right away. They want the healing right away. A lot of times, the, the Lord give them instructions. And if they follow instructions, healing will come. And when they get to their destination, they will be healed. And as they was obedient to what God has told them, by the time they got to the priest, they was healed. Amen. Amen. But we, uh, but a lot of times, a lot of times we don't want to take that first step of faith. A lot of times you say, Lord, I, uh, if, 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 you, uh, if you give me enough money, I do what you told me to do. And God done told them to do, do, what, do, uh, do something. They won't do it until they see all the money or, or see the results of what they're praying for before they act. A lot of people say, well, when I get my family straightened out, we'll go to church. And God has, God has said, you come to the house of God and I'll straighten your family out. And people want to go, they want to get the family straightened out before they go. But if you just be obedient to what God is telling you to do and, and, and accept him as your master, when you get there, it'll be all right. Amen. Right. Hey you might not look, you might not look healed. You might look, still look sick. You might look, still look like you're diseased. But when you get where you're going, God got deliverance for you. Amen. He has a healing for you, but you got to take that step. You got to take that step of, of obedience. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I've seen this. might not fe feel healed now. You might not be qualified now. But God say, when you get where I want you to go, you'll be healed. 
you'll be qualified. But you got to be going in the right direction. And going in the direction I tell you to go. Amen. And say, as they follow God's, as they follow his instructions, uh, and, and, and uh, they was, the Bible said, as they went, as they went, they was cleansed. As they went, they was cleansed. Now, uh, verse 15 say, now, one of them, are you the one? One of them, when he saw, he was healed. He turned back and with a loud voice, giving glory to God. He was on his way to see the priest. And as he was walking and being obedient to the master, he wasn't healed yet. But I, I, I can imagine he kept checking. He was walking, but he was checking. He was walking, he was checking. And, and after he checked one more time, he saw he was healed. And immediately when he was healed, he turned back. He backtracked his step. It was only one of them. All of them was healed, but it was one that backtracked the steps. And make it so bad, all, I'm not saying they wasn't grateful. But God didn't, didn't compliment them on their grateful. He complimented them, them coming back and praising God. You can be grateful all you want in your heart, but God want to see some action. Just like we talk about thanks living. God want to see some action. He want to see some, some praise. He want, he want you to come back and give him praise. Amen. He said, but one of them went back. He reversed his steps. He put his family on hold. He put his priest on hold. And he went back and had a celebration all by himself. Amen. And, and, and God is looking for you to put him first. Put him first. He put it, like I say, he put his family on hold and, and, every, and went back. Amen. And, and some, some of us, God has blessed us on our journey and blessed us to do great things. And we still hadn't went back and thanked God for the things he already done in our life. Amen. And, and some of us need to go back and start thanking God for all the things he's already done in our life. Amen. And they said with a, and they said with a loud voice. He glorified God. Amen. A lot of times that's where we mess up. But we're, we're too ashamed to give, to give praise to God with a loud voice. We worry about what people think. We worry about that, that, you know, we're too dignified and worry about what people think and to praise God. But you don't worry about that when you're in the football stand. You, you, you come home hoarse. And the football players, they, get, they did nothing for you. And that game, they didn't take money from you. But you come back hoarse and you and you 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 uh, you're praising the players and everything else. But 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 God wants you to praise Him. Amen. He you know I, I like I like David. David praised the Lord so much he was king. He was king and he praised the Lord so much he danced out of his clothes. He danced so much that his wife was embarrassed of him. And his wife approached him and was like, you, you, you embarrassed me out there. You, in front of all of these people, he said, you think that was bad? You just wait. <laughs> you just wait because it was God that chose me over your father. And it was God. And, I, and the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He said, give a shout of triumph. Amen. And, and, and we, we're talking about thanksgiving. We think about thanks living. We, we should be living this thanks to the Lord every day of our life. And number 16 said, he fell down on his face, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Samaritan, the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. Samaritans was a mixed race. Hey Amen. The, uh, they weren't a full-blooded full Jew. But most of the Samaritans, you know who most of the Samaritans was? They was descendants of Joseph. They was from the tribe of Ephraim and, and Manasseh. They was, a, they, was, they was the descendants of Joseph. And God loved the, the Samaritans. And, and uh, the woman at the well was a Samaritan. The, the story of the good Samaritan. And this is Luke writing how Jesus, how, 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 uh, how Jesus loved the Samaritan. He loved the people. He loved, uh, and the only one that came back and showed gratitude was the Samaritan. And, and, and a lot of times, the chosen people, people that's chosen, like possibly the Jews or some, sometimes Christians now, they, they, they think they're deserving of the 
the healing. They're deserving of the deliverance. And, and, and that, that sense of entitlement hinders, hinders gratitude. A lot of times when you got a sense of entitlement, you don't praise God like you're supposed to. You don't praise that that hinders God gratitude, that hinders thanksgiving. If you got a sense of entitlement that God's supposed to do this for me anyway, it's by his grace. It's by his grace and his mercy that we're not consumed. Amen. And, uh, and I, that's why I will bless the Lord at all times, for the good times and the bad times, because it's by his grace we're not consumed. Now, uh, verse 17 said that Jesus answered and said, <laughs> Were not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Wasn't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Where is the other nine? And I can I can imagine the Samaritan said, I I, I don't know about the nine, but Lord, I'm here. I'm here to worship you. And when you come to the house of the Lord. Anytime you come to the house of the Lord, don't worry about the nine. Just let the Lord know, I'm here. I'm here to worship you. I'm here to bow down. I'm here to bless you. I'm here to lift up my hands. I'm here to open my mouth. I'm here to give you glory and honor and praise. I'm here with a grateful heart. Amen. I thank you for what you've done for me. But, but, but don't worry about the nine. You be the one that's giving God the praise. You don't be the nine. You be the one. You be the one. And, and Jesus said that, wasn't it ten of y'all? What the other nine? And, I, and, and I, I think it's, you know, the other nine. They might have had things that was important to them. A lot of times, things that we think important to us, you know, uh, they might have thought, you know, they had a business to run. They've been, they've been a leopard. They got to they gotta go back and start running their business again. That might be important to them. They might have had a grandbaby while they was gone, and they want to come back and go hold a grandbaby. They might have need to go figure they got to go back and go find a job and, and catch up on the bills. Or, or they got maybe they got company coming, and they need to make it home and get prepared for company. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you know, they, they thought, you know, Alabama might have been in the national championship this year. And uh, they need to be there when, when Georgia beat them or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, why did I go there? But, uh, <laughs> But the thing is, it was important to them, but it wasn't important to God. And a lot of times, we need to check ourselves. If it wasn't for Jesus, they wouldn't have been on their way back home. If it wasn't for Jesus, they wouldn't have been back on their way back home to their family and to that grandbaby and to that job. It was, it was, it was because of Jesus answering prayer. Amen. And verse 19, it says, and he said, arise, go your way, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. They're going to ask you to come back. It was 10 heal, but only one of them was made whole. 10 heal. But only one of them was made whole and was saved. That word made whole was saved. His come, him coming back, worshiping the Lord, saved. And I want to let you know tonight that there's a no abusive scar you so bad that God can't touch you and heal you. There's no sin that has made you unlovable to God. There's no problem that God can't solve and there's no failure with neglect God love. And the miracle of thanksgiving is the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. No exceptions, no qualifications, no doubt. He loves you. He loves you. And he's willing to forgive you. And he desire thanksgiving. He desire to praise you. Praise from my lips. He know if you're thankful in your heart. But he said he, he wanted the fruit of your lips to give him praise. He knew if all those, all those nine lepers was grateful. 
but he wanted the fruit of their lips. He wanted to, with a loud voice, praise his name. And I, I don't want to, don't let this be any time you come in the house of worship. If you have to be prodded and begged to give God praise. He's already done enough that you can praise him for the rest of your life. He's already done enough and it brought you through so much and all his mercy. He's done enough that you can praise him for the rest of your life. You can come in here and you can thank him for saving you. Thank you for forgiving him, washing away your sins, picking you up out of the muck and mire and setting your feet on a solid rock. God is already fixing some areas in your life as you on your journey to do what he called you to do. And when you get to your destination, you're going to be complete. You're going to be qualified to do what God has told you to do. Amen. He served. We serve a God that died on the cross for my sins and has been raised and conquered death, hell, and the grave. And I'm willing to serve him. I'm willing to serve him my whole life. I'm willing to praise him every time I get in his presence for his goodness and mercy. Have a praise team, uh, a prayer team come up at this time. you've been so good to us and we want to ask you for forgiveness that we put others before you instead of coming back and thanking you that we put other things that's more important to us that we come back to, than coming back and thanking you for your goodness and mercy we thank you for bringing us here in your presence that we may be redeemed the, the time and give you glory, honor, and praise. For there's some here that don't know you. Some here that's in a backslidden state. Some here that's not sure. Lord, I pray right now that they come back home to you. Those that's backslidden that be reconnected to you. Lord, those that's in dark crevices, that's dealing with sin, Lord, I ask you as they, as they cry out that you hear their prayer tonight. And Lord, I just thank you right now. Lord, as we prepare to come to your table, Lord, we ask you to renew our heart. Make us right as you come, as we come to your table tonight. And Lord, we ask you right now to bless and touch, deliver in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you, I thank you. Right now, the altar is open. Before I want to open the altar, I want to put up, as we get ready to prepare to come to the the Lord's table. I want to put up a, a prayer. I want everyone to, in preparation, to come into the Lord's table. I want us to read. I'm going to read. I want you to repeat after me this prayer. I want everyone here, as we prepare to come to the Lord's table, to repeat this prayer. I want you to repeat. Father, it is written in your word. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and, and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, 
I confess Jesus as my Lord. I make him my Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan. Close the door and any of his devices. And I, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me from all of my sins. Jesus is my Lord. And I am a new creation. Old things are passed away. And now all things become new in Jesus' name. At this time, if you need, you have a prayer need for anything, I want you to come at this time. Uh, we we uh, we won't, won't prolong the time. We do. We are be coming to the Lord's Supper here, uh, uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper in a few minutes. But I just pray that something was said. That God, God touched your heart and uh, the Holy Spirit moved, and you can use uh, a word from the Lord tonight and put you in the right direction receive your healing and receive your blessing. Amen. Let's pray. So we want to stand and join in worship together. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain i 
this time, I'll invite the communion stewards to come forward and begin to serve this body of believers. Glory to his name. I'm grateful for the word of the Lord tonight and for the vessel that God has used to speak through us. Thank you so much, Pastor John. We give glory to the name of Jesus Christ for the word of the Lord that has strengthened our souls and fed us tonight. Glory to God. As you receive the elements of Holy Communion tonight, I'll remind you that we do so in obedience to the Lord. He gives us this command to do this in remembrance of me. As I've told you in times past, there is no prerequisite of church membership to receive Holy Communion. You don't have to be a member of this local church or any local church to receive Holy Communion with us. We only ask that you know that you are a member of the body of Christ. That is, you know you are a child of God. You've placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are a child of the family of God. As I already hear many of you doing, please do go on ahead and remove the top layer of cellophane, which reveals the bread. And then once you have the bread in your hand, please remove the next layer, the aluminum foil there, and you will find the juice. And tonight, I want to advise you that at the end, after we've had communion together, please just place the packaging neatly there in the seat beside you, and someone will come by and pick that up after the service is dismissed. remind you as you hold the elements together tonight that the wafer of course represents the body of Christ the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus that was broken so that you and I could be blessed and made whole not just healed but made whole and of course the juice that's in your cup is representative of the blood of Jesus Christ the, that blood by which those stripes came upon his body, the blood began to flow from his body even then. And then, of course, as he was nailed to the cross and he laid down his life for you and I, all the blood flowed from his body. And when it was completed, when it was finished, you hear the words come from his mouth upon the cross, Tetelestai, it is finished. The blood sacrifice was made complete tonight. As we receive Holy Communion, we remember the goodness of God that was shown towards you and I, that we could have our salvation and be so grateful to God for that. Reading from Matthew 26, verse 26, the Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. over a lamb, without spot and without blemish. Oh God, we praise you. The Bible says that then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we worship you tonight, and we thank you for every drop of blood. Lord, that you allowed to spill from your body that came coursing out of your veins. Jesus, we thank you for the stripes you took upon your body, Lord. And we declare by those stripes, Lord, we are healed and we are made whole. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrificial death upon the cross, Lord, that we could know what it is to be born again, to be saved. Oh, how great is your salvation. Great is the Lord. Jesus, you're worthy of our praise. I love that Jesus says, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Many, if you'll look around, you'll see there's, there's some people here. Not very many, but there's, there's some people here. And we're reminded tonight that there are many, many more members of the body of Christ than what we see on a regular basis. 
thank God for the body of Christ. Thank God for the worldwide body of Christ. Jesus says there is one shepherd and one fold. And for all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of their souls, we are one with them. We're one body. Thank God for his blood which makes us one. Jesus looks forward to another time. Prophetically, he speaks. He says, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That day. What a day we have to look forward to. That day when we're all joined together around the same table in the kingdom of heaven. When the kingdom of our God on earth is fully at home in the kingdom of heaven. And we're sitting around that table and we enjoy that blessed time. Such a fellowship like we've never known. Such a closeness with one another and with the King of Kings himself we'll be able to enjoy. Well, it's been a wonderful time together. Before we move to the dismissal portion, I want to ask, Pastor Derek, could you lead us into that third and final verse of that song we're singing tonight? Then came the morning that sealed the promise. You're just shout that Jesus you are my living hope Jesus you are my living hope hallelujah 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 thank you Lord bless your name thank you Lord the roaring lion (laughs) I love that by the way we're glad to have an Emmanuel College lion home from Emmanuel College Zachary good to see you Zach Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Psalm 100, about verse 4 and 5, says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Thank you, Pastor John. His truth endures, endures to all generations. I want us to thank the Lord. Pastor uh, John, you put a lot, of, a lot on that plate to eat on tonight, and we can take... Take it with us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. You're so good to us. Thank you for goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. You are so, so good. <laughs> Your goodness run, uh, just runs after us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We rejoice in you tonight, dear Jesus. We give you praise and honor and bless your name. Everybody say amen. Happy Thanksgiving.